Hello, and welcome to this year's Empire Whole Health Heroes Awards event. I'm Casey Seiler, editor of the Times Union, and I'm proud to host this year's awards. When we started to discuss these awards last summer, we could not have envisioned where we are now. These awards are meant to honor companies and people who have revitalized the capital region, especially over the past 24 months. Among our honorees, you'll find a person who makes sure our water stays clean and a company that provides coding education to those who may lack the financial resources to otherwise afford it. You'll find names you know and several folks whose work deserves to be brought to greater public attention. In the end, we're excited to present all these individuals and organizations to you. We're also happy to welcome our sponsor, Empire Blue Cross and their parent company, Anthem, to this year's awards. Without their help, we wouldn't be able to honor these leaders today. But before we get to the list of this year's winners, I'm proud to introduce the regional vice president for Empire Blue Cross, Jason O'Malley, who will not only share a few words, but also introduce today's keynote speaker, Mark Egan from the Capital Region Chamber. Jason, take it away. Thank you, Casey. We really appreciate the Times Union's partnership to recognize the whole health heroes and are excited to be here for these prestigious awards. I would like to start off by announcing that as a result of the impact today's heroes have had on us here at Empire, we will be making a $5,000 donation in the names of our heroes to the Regional Food Bank of Northeastern New York. So thank you for all you've done and thank you for the inspiration. As the whole health company, our mission is to materially and measurably improve the health of all New Yorkers and certainly the health of the capital region as a whole. There's never been a more important or challenging time to do that than the past two years. Last year's awards went to those whose efforts helped keep us safe as the pandemic was in full force. There was some truly amazing stories across the entire healthcare spectrum that achieved recognition for improving the health of our community and making our region safer. Even though we've made a lot of progress since then with vaccines and now a downturn in Omicron, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done to fully recover from the pandemic and promote the growth of the Capital District. This year, we are also honoring whole health heroes who are doing just that. People and organizations that are committed to revitalizing the area, investing in its people, and setting the stage for a healthy and prosperous future. I'm really excited to recognize all of today's heroes and introduce a keynote speaker for today's event with an in-depth understanding of the importance of strengthening our local community through collaboration, investment, and a focus on inclusion. Joining us today, we have Mark Egan, President and CEO of the Capital Region Chamber, who actually also participated as a panelist last year and shared some valuable insight on rebuilding the economy. Mark is a certified chamber executive with over 30 years of experience, who has served as a chairman of the Association of Chamber of Commerce Executives and is currently serving on the U.S. Chamber's Executive Committee. We are very pleased to have a local leader who's at the forefront of our resurgence and understands the important role a healthy community plays in a healthy economy. Mark, welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jason. My hat's off to you and your team at Empire Blue Cross. Thank you for helping us celebrate some of the best among the best in our community through this awards program. Good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to join you. You know, it's been said that it's not the number of times that we fall that makes us who we are. It's the number of times that we get back up. To varying extents, we all fall down and hopefully get up, but then we fall again and again. And over the past two years, we've experienced this in new ways due to the pandemic. New pressures and stress on our physical and mental health as well as many folks have experienced financial hardship. We crave for things to be normal again, don't we? But I've learned over the years that things don't normally just happen on their own. It's people who make things happen. And I've been so inspired by the resilience, the determination, the generosity, the compassion exhibited by so many people, organizations and businesses throughout our community. When someone falls down and gets up, and then help someone else who fell to not only get up, but stay up and move forward. That's what we call a hero. These are whole health heroes, healthcare providers, essential workers, business, government, civic leaders, everyday citizens who go above and beyond for others. 
to helping us revitalize the capital region. It's terrific to be recognizing and celebrating you today. Speaking of recognition, my thanks to Empire Blue Cross, the whole health company, whose own efforts are nothing short of heroic. Empire is working with our community to remove barriers to good health and to approach care with a holistic strategy. Just as Empire knows it's important to look at a person's whole health to inform the best approach to care, it's important that we also take a holistic approach to our community when aiming for the best outcomes. Often when someone thinks of the Capital Region Chamber or the Center for Economic Growth, our Regional Economic Development Organization, which is also known as CEG, they often think of our business community. But while we're supported by businesses, our goal isn't simply for businesses to succeed. Our goal is for our communities to thrive, which means all of our citizens will have access to opportunity. The way that most people have opportunity or better opportunity, it's because they have a job or a better job. Therefore, growing businesses is essential to having a strong, prosperous community. Our organization is committed to helping drive the growth of existing businesses as we proactively market the region to new companies with a focus on key industry clusters. You know, there's an expression that maybe you've heard that you can't win tomorrow's baseball game with yesterday's hits. We must focus on the future. If we aren't moving forward, we're likely to decline. Each of our individual communities matter, but undeniably, we're one economic region. Our communities are dependent upon each other for success. Therefore, we're stronger when working in unison as a region to realize our true potential. Nowadays, it's impossible to talk to a business or to turn on the news without hearing about the workforce shortage. As we rebuild from the pandemic, we must rebuild with a robust and equitable approach. We are helping businesses with their upskilling needs, which means we need to ensure that everyone in our region has skills to compete and succeed. Along those lines, we're working with our K through 12 schools, with higher education, including our community colleges. We're also working with a number of workforce development organizations to better align strategies to address critical needs. Due to a focused effort to diversify our economy and to grow private sector jobs, we're fortunate that our region is poised for continued growth. For this to occur, however, we must get more people to move to the capital region. We need to find ways to tap into the students who spend four years at our area colleges and universities. If we could get just 5% um, more to remain in our region upon graduation, just think what that could do for our talent pipeline. In the coming months for the first time, we'll be leading initiative, an initiative for summer interns who are working with area businesses. Our goal is to connect those interns with one another, but also connect them to our community. And we hope that they'll seek permanent employment in the capital region. If you aren't aware, last year, the Center for Economic Growth launched talent attraction campaign, CAP and Y. If you haven't already, I encourage you to visit the website, gocapny.com. This portal tells the authentic story about our eight county, 1.1 million plus capital region. As part of this effort, we are doing targeted outreach through social media placements, primarily to 30 somethings in New York City and Boston. Our goal is to increase the awareness of the capital region as a destination of choice not only to build their career, but to make a life. Again, the web address is gohappenny.com. An essential element to our shared prosperity and business strength is going to be our ability to cultivate inclusion and belonging in our workplaces and broader community. Diversity, equity, inclusion, DEI, are bottom line imperatives upon which businesses can build, grow, and thrive. In other words, increasing diversity and growing inclusion, it's not only the right thing to do, it makes smart business sense. We, when we engage individuals reflective of the full spectrum of our region, we drive innovation, we enhance productivity, 
and experience inclusive economic growth is going to take intentional, actionable strides by all of us. The Capital Region Chamber and the Center for Economic Growth are committed to the economic health of our community. As we work to revitalize from the pandemic, we seek economic resilience, inclusion, and broad-based prosperity for all that call the Capital Region home. It was my pleasure to join you this morning. Once again, congratulations to our Empire Whole Health Heroes. Thanks to Jason and Mark for showing us all how the Capital Region has continued to thrive and excel despite the challenges of the past few years. As a resident of the area myself, I'm certainly hoping things continue to look up. Now, it's time to get to this year's winners. As I read each bio, there will be a slide up so you get to see their names and some pictures of them, even as I'm talking. Imagine what it was like for more marginalized members of the Capital Region community who traditionally depend on the emotional support of in-person services. The Pride Center of the Capital Region doesn't have to imagine. Its staff saw firsthand what even a small disruption to in-person services can do to the vibrant community it serves. Yet throughout the coronavirus pandemic, the Pride Center did everything possible, utilizing a mix of hybrid programs and telehealth to continue serving the LGBTQ plus community. Its tenacity and perseverance in the face of such adversity has earned the Pride Center this year's Empire Whole Health Heroes Award. Our organization, like all LGBTQ plus centers, is a vital resource to the Capital Region, not only in supporting the LGBTQ plus folks who rely on the services we offer, but as a trusted leader in the broader community, says Jen Maley Wheeler, the center's director of operations and programs. Ultimately, the Pride Center envisions a future in the Capital Region that is intersectional, focusing on more than just a person's queer identity by acknowledging the experiences they may have had because of their race, age, socioeconomic status, ability level, documentation status, language spoken, and any other marginalized identities they may be a part of in order to truly serve the whole spectrum of Capital Region residents who identify as LGBTQ plus in the area. For this vision and all they do to support the local community, we're proud to name the Pride Center of the Capital Region one of this year's Empire Whole Health Heroes. Outside of healthcare, the field most challenged by the pandemic is education. And that challenge extends beyond the boundaries of a campus. A functioning university, after all, helps the well being of the surrounding community both sociologically and economically during boom times and bus times alike. It is why we've chosen Dr. Havadan Rodriguez, the president of the University of Albany as one of this year's whole health heroes. Throughout the pandemic, UAlbany stepped up time and again to fulfill its role, a fact of which Rodriguez is especially proud. In the earliest days of the pandemic, students, faculty and staff of UAlbany's 3D printed PPE for frontline workers, hosted the first state-run upstate drive-through COVID testing site, quickly stood up an in-house testing lab at the RNA Institute that helped local businesses safely return to work, helped launch one of the first state-run mass vaccination sites, and partnered with Catholic Charities and the Regional Food Bank on massive food distribution for those in need. None of these things was easy, says Dr. Rodriguez, noting that each posed unique challenges for the campus. But in each instance, he said, members of our community recognized that UAlbany could play an important role in the health, well being, and economic recovery of our region and worked incredibly hard to make it happen. That's what an anchor institution in any community should do, and it's what UAlbany has been doing since its founding in 1844. We are proud to honor Dr. Havadan Rodriguez with an Empire Whole Health Hero Award. Whether it's hitting the trail for a run or a bike ride, sitting in a quiet park to escape the stress of our workaday world, or just getting outdoors to breathe some clean, fresh air, our green spaces are vital to our health and wellness. That fact has never been more important than during the lockdowns and social distancing brought on by the pandemic. And no one has done more to promote and ensure access to public green spaces in the capital region 
than Parks and Trails New York. That's what makes the organization a deserved whole health hero. While the organization doesn't directly own lands, its members are instrumental in helping organize grassroots efforts from putting together volunteer cleanups to writing and issuing reports on state parks to petitioning state government to steward our most treasured resources. We're a small dynamic team, Horvath says, that has an outsized impact on our public green spaces and the communities that love and use them. For protecting our green spaces, we're proud to name Parks and Trails New York a whole health hero. As a nurse clinician at Albany Medical Center for the past 36 years, Lori Malone prides herself on patient relations while working in one of the toughest disciplines in medicine. In the oncology unit, Malone is responsible for guiding patients and their families from cancer diagnosis through treatment and into recovery. For her work in this unit and all she does at the hospital, we're proud to name her as one of this year's Empire Whole Health Heroes. Healthcare is not an easy or glamorous profession, she says. From ringing the bell in the hallway, a tradition that signifies the end to a tough chapter of chemotherapy, to holding a patient's hand as they take their last breath, Malone expresses a sense of honor and purpose in performing the daily tasks of her job. Over the years, Malone has seen hundreds of people come in and out of Albany Med, and yet she values each and every encounter as an opportunity to help, noting that many individual experiences stay with her forever. Congratulations to Lori Malone as being named one of our Empire Whole Health Heroes. Centro Civico, a division of the Greater Ibero-American Action League, has been advocating for Latinos and the underserved in the capital region for over 35 years. Since 1986, their work as a dual language multi-service agency has been an invaluable part of revitalizing the capital region, earning the nonprofit one of this year's Empire Whole Health Heroes Awards. Our mission at Centro Civico is to uplift, empower, and advocate for Latinos and the underserved to achieve equity and become fully valued community members, says Roxanne Marin, Regional Director of the Ibero-American Action League. Centro Civico operates out of Albany and Amsterdam and serves the immigrant, refugee, Latino, and LGBTQ communities in the capital region and surrounding counties. Centro Civico helps low-income families access English as a second language classes, language access, immigration services, and immigration attorneys, case management, language courses for adults, voter registration drives, advocacy, and a variety of health, education, housing, business development, and employment programs. Marin adds that as the local Latino community continues to grow, Centro Civico will continue to provide the services needed to make our capital region community more equitable. Congratulations to Centro Civico on being named one of this year's Empire Whole Health Heroes. Raymond A. Kaiser, a resident of Hudson and owner of Claverack Pump Service, is one of the winners of this year's Empire Whole Health Heroes Awards. His local business has been ensuring that our community has access to the cleanest and safest water since the 1960s. A fourth generation leader of Claverack, Raymond took over the business from his father, Chuck, in 2012. Since then, Raymond has dedicated his professional life to helping the community have access to the cleanest, safest water possible, something he believes isn't a luxury, but an absolute necessity. Maintaining a safe working environment for our employees and our customers in the face of COVID-19 and other challenges has been our greatest achievement in the last year, he says. We're proud of our dedicated employees who went above and beyond during these challenging times, providing our customers with a 24-hour emergency line. Congratulations to Raymond A. Kaiser on being one of our winners. An area cannot thrive while its youth are suffering or at risk. Luckily, the Capital Region has a vital resource in the Boys and Girls Clubs. They're dedicated to providing youth and teens with a wide range of programs to support them in their everyday lives, as well as opportunities to cultivate traits that will lead to success in adulthood. For the Boys and Girls Club, the future of the Capital Region is a place where everyone feels safe, a place where everyone belongs, and a place where youth and families have access to critical services and opportunities to thrive, says Jason Reuter, CEO of the Boys and Girls Clubs 
of the capital area. Well-rounded youth make for engaged citizens, which makes for a strong and vibrant community. This is why the Boys and Girls Clubs of the capital area has earned an Empire Whole Health Heroes Award. Reuter says, as we continue to revitalize our downtowns and invest in equitable solutions for our underserved communities, our hope is that the capital region's future growth will bring prosperity for all its members. For this vision and for all they do to help area youth, we're proud to name the Boys and Girls Club of the Capital Area a winner of this year's Empire Whole Health Heroes. Consumer Directed Choices is a private not-for-profit corporation in Albany founded in 1997 around the self-determination philosophy, the fundamental principle that individuals should have the ability to determine their own care and thus their lives to the greatest extent possible, says CD Choices CEO, Chris Graber. Graber is our next whole health hero for the work his company puts in as the vanguard of such an effort. Graber believes that this philosophy and supporting the workers who make it possible for all of us to live in place for as long as we'd like can shape the future of the capital region. The future of the capital region can be met with confidence, optimism, and great possibility if we protect the most vulnerable, support our essential home care workers, and invest in rebuilding a strong, stable, and equitable home health care system, Graber says. It is for this optimism and for his dedication to his staff and clients over the past 24 months that we're proud to name Chris Graber, CEO of CD Choices, a whole health hero. The Capital Region's Hudson Valley Community College is a thriving example of what a public college can be. HVCC's commitment to serving the Capital Region through education reflects the vision of its president, Roger A. Ramsamy, PhD, winner of one of this year's Empire Whole Health Heroes Awards. HVCC meets a variety of critical needs for the continued success and revitalization of the Capital Region. But during the COVID pandemic, one area in particular came to the forefront, training our community's future healthcare workers. Ramsamy said, our School of Health Sciences offers more than 20 programs that train healthcare workers, including our nursing program, which is in extremely high demand. He said, we are currently in the process of increasing our capacity to educate even more students through the creation of HVCC North at our current TechSmart Extension Center in Malta. Once the project is completed, we will be able to train more graduates to enter the healthcare field and help our local providers keep up with the ever increasing demand for skilled workers. For this vision of preparing the next generation of local leaders, we're proud to name Dr. Roger Ramsamy, one of this year's Whole Health Heroes. To hear more from Dr. Ramsamy about the work he's doing at HVCC, Jason O'Malley is back to speak with him. Jason, take it away. I'm here with one of our winners today, Dr. Ram Sammy, president of Hudson Valley Community College. Uh, Dr. Ram Sammy, thank you for joining us and congratulations on your recognition as a whole health hero. We really appreciate your commitment to the community and your dedication to the success of the next generation of leaders. Uh, I have a couple questions for you. Thank you very much. So you certainly have great dedication to education, obviously as the president of HVCC, uh, but throughout your whole life. Um, building the Capital Region as a tech center has been critical to the growth of this area. So what programs have you put in place to help uh, HVCC students contribute to that growth? Yes, thank you very much for this opportunity to share with you some of the things that we have done. Uh, I've been on board as president at the college for three and a half, going on four years this coming June. And during that time, we came in at a, when community colleges were facing hardships throughout. As you know, many of the colleges around the nation have been seeing drastic decrease in its enrollment. Uh, and as we know it, community colleges, they service more than 50% of the workforce throughout the United States. And hence, Community college play a very strategic role in making sure that the workforce remain in place. Hence, Hudson Valley serves a very important purpose in that we serve the capital region. That's a pretty important area in order for us to service. At this particular point, we 
at the college, we focus on what are the needs of our community because we are indeed a community college, which means we are here to serve the community. You know, just seeing how you're positioning the young people for success in the future uh, with, you know, some real thought leadership there. I mean, that, you know, that's amazing, you know. Thank you again for joining us. Congratulations on the, on the award today. Uh, you're truly deserving, and uh, we look forward to see what you're going to do next. Thank you so Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you, Jason and Dr. Ram Sammy for that insight and information. Now back to our winners. As CEO of Business for Good, a foundation that focuses on venture philanthropy, Jakeen Hoke and his diverse and inclusive team are in the position to use the organization's $20 million fund to support a variety of startup companies that will provide critical pillars for the capital region community. For this work, we are proud to honor Jakeen Hoke as one of this year's whole health heroes. Under Hoke's leadership, Business for Good has become an important philanthropic organization throughout the region. In January, they provided a $50,000 grant to CanCode, a digital literacy program. The CanCode gift speaks to the comprehensive awareness Business for Good stewards, including Hoke, possess when making contributions. The digital divide is among the leading causes of educational and economic disparity, not just in New York, but across America. Business for Good believes that education in all forms should be accessible to everyone, Hoke says. We are proud to support CanCode for their efforts to provide the community with necessary tools and resources to develop and thrive. For this and his vision of the future of Albany and the region, we're proud to name Jakeen Hoke as one of this year's whole health heroes. With a nonprofit that's been around as long as United Way, you may have a vague sense of what they do. When asked, many of us can point to a fundraiser we've contributed to or recall someone's relative who volunteers with the venerable 125 year old nonprofit. But perhaps we'd be hard pressed to say specifically what United Way does in their day to day operations. Here in the Capital Region, United Way is on the forefront of innovative ideas that are bringing people from all walks of life together to be a part of local solutions. It's the kind of forward thinking the Capital Region needs, especially after two years of a global pandemic that has stretched area nonprofits to their breaking points. But far from breaking, the United Way of the greater Capital Region kept evolving with its core mission intact earning the organization an Empire Whole Health Heroes Award. United Way fights for the health, education, and financial stability of every person in our community, says Peter Gannon, president and CEO of the organization. We are a leader, convener, and a problem solver that tries to take on tough challenges and bring innovative solutions with various resources to deliver a better outcome for our neighbors. Congratulations to the United Way of the Greater Capital Region on being named one of this year's Empire Whole Health Heroes. Good character reveals itself through action. This requires an understanding of others' needs and the commitment to provide for them. In her role as Regional Director of Rehabilitation at GEM Rehab, Pamela Shore demonstrates this principle on a regular basis. She consistently goes above and beyond to foster an environment that supports and inspires her coworkers, which in turn leads to superior care for her patients. And her extraordinary work in support of both patients and coworkers has earned Pamela an Empire Whole Health Heroes Award. Pamela is a dedicated regional manager who always puts her fellow therapists, coworkers, and patients first, says Tony Ann Moynihan, who nominated Pamela for this award. A seasoned professional with over three decades of experience in the field of healthcare, Pam has spent the past seven years as regional manager at GEM Rehab, a leading provider of speech, physical, and occupational therapies. GEM works with patients and facilities to create specialized plans of treatment to promote rehabilitation and help individuals regain functionality. Pam is always willing to lend a helping hand, and for all of this and more, we're proud to name Pam Shore a winner of this year's Whole Health Heroes Award. We've all seen how CEFQ takes its role as a leader in the capital region seriously, from its tireless community outreach programs to its financial support of capital region residents and small businesses, 
SEFQ is one of the leaders in the region. For this, we are proud to name SEFQ one of this year's Empire Whole Health Heroes. Its CEO, Michael Castellano, says, quote, in addition to loans and savings accounts, SEFQ remains committed to changing lives every day in everything we do, especially here in the capital region, our home for nearly 90 years. Throughout the pandemic, SEFQ's employees have been staunch advocates for local healthcare heroes, donating PPE and supplies to healthcare workers and at the height of the pandemic's first wave, transforming the Hilton Garden Inn across from Albany Med into Heroes Landing, a respite for medical professionals working at Albany Med and St. Peter's Hospital. And through the pandemic, their efforts have evolved. Along with promoting physical health, SEFQ has supported flexibility in scheduling, launching a support group for parents navigating the challenges of the pandemic, and developed resources for employees to stay up to date on credible COVID-19 related information. SEFQ also continues to host COVID-19 vaccine clinics at its 700 Patroon Creek Operations Center for its staff, the developmentally disabled, and the general public. Whole Health Hero Kim Siliciano, CEO of YWCA of Northeastern New York, receives this prestigious recognition for her tireless work leading YWCA's mission to eliminate racism, empower women in our communities, and promote peace, justice, freedom, and dignity for all. For the last 19 years, Siciliano has served in various roles at YWCA NENY, eventually as executive director. As CEO, Siciliano oversees six different program directors and over 70 employees. Strengthening and revitalizing the capital region has been a priority for Siciliano and the YWCA for years. Like any successful nonprofit, Siciliano notes the YWCA's strength in the capital region derives from individuals, their staff, donors, and funders, all coming together to support the work the YWCA does to keep our communities vibrant and growing. It's a formula that Siciliano believes will lead to continued revitalization in the region. The future of the capital region is filled with hope, she says. I see many opportunities for nonprofits working with other nonprofits and businesses to create a different way of doing business using creativity, compassion, and cooperation. Congratulations to Kim Siciliano for being named one of this year's Whole Health Heroes. With an eye toward building neighborhood spaces that nurture connection and community, developer Jeff Buell has reinvigorated the capital region as principal of Redburn Development Partners in Schenectady. Finding innovative solutions and spreading positivity has always been a passion of Buell's, his long and winding career path included a stint as a newspaper reporter and a government spokesman before landing in the real estate industry. This is why Buell has been recognized as one of this year's Empire Whole Health Heroes. As a community, we went through something as a whole, and it was basically everyone's worst nightmare, Buell says, of the pandemic. So I'm trying to find people and work with people and engage with people who have the disposition of, I went through my worst nightmare and survived, so anything's possible. Redburn's steadfast commitment to productivity and efficiency, even during a global crisis, has made the development company more in demand than ever. The opportunities are coming at us fast and furious. It's off to the races, says Buell, for his you get what you give motto and his support of urban renewal. We are proud to award Jeff Buell as one of this year's whole health heroes. The Free Food Fridge Association, or FRIGE, is a nonprofit international network of community fridge activists challenging the stereotypes of poverty while providing access to fresh food. FRIGE is a sharing mechanism aiming to reduce food insecurity and food waste simultaneously. By installing community fridges in which food is free and fresh, Frege is promoting equal access to healthy food and innovative ideas at the neighborhood level, building stronger communities. The recent addition of a community fridge in the capital region has earned Jamela Anderson, the founder of the local chapter of the Free Food Fridge Association and Empire Whole Health Heroes Award. Anderson says, we serve as a reminder that even in the times where you feel most alone or without, that someone right here in the community is here to help and rely on. We want to serve as a jumping off point for other folks in the business of mutual aid, providing the resources to the people who need it 
without jumping through any hoops. And for Anderson, free food fridge is just the first step. For this vision and her program that makes food more accessible to all Capital Region residents, we're proud to honor Jamela Anderson as one of this year's Empire Whole Health Heroes. To say the work of distributing the coronavirus vaccine was challenging would be the understatement of the year. Albany Medical Center was selected by the governor as a hub for the Capital Region's COVID-19 vaccine rollout, and Ruth Leslie was appointed as the planning lead for eight counties and about a million people. With marching orders to design a fair and efficient blueprint for distributing the vaccine, Leslie organized and managed a task force with a special focus on vulnerable communities. She says, we quickly assembled a team of trusted leaders in healthcare, government, and the community to form the Capital Region Vaccine Network. Together, we developed plans to vaccinate over a million Capital Region residents. My role was to work with all our partners to facilitate administration of the vaccine. It is fair to say that Leslie is being a touch modest here. As the liaison between community leaders and health officials, she was charged with advocating for the many communities that make up the Capital Region, evaluating the needs of the highest risk citizens and making on the spot decisions to help manage a crisis that evolved by the hour. Not to mention assuaging the concerns of a desperate public in a confusing and frightening time. It is no wonder that Ruth Leslie is being recognized as one of this year's Empire Whole Health Heroes. Congratulations on this award. To hear more from Ruth about the work she's been doing at Albany Med, Jason O'Malley is back to speak with her. Jason, take it away. Joining us today is Ruth Leslie, planning lead for Capital Region's Vaccine Hub at Albany Medical Center and a 2022 Empire Blue Cross Whole Health Heroes Hero. Uh, hi, Ruth. And first, let me say congratulations on this well-deserved award. Hi, Jason. Thank you so much for having me and, and for the uh, honor of, uh, of uh, having received this award. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So we certainly all thank you for your work getting the Capital Region vaccinated. And certainly we all agree that that's a vital step in us moving forward to becoming, you know, fully open again, safely, right? And so uh, you coordinated efforts of many of the county health departments to facilitate the, the vaccine rollout across the region. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about the collaboration and what the coordination looked like to get that done? Yeah, I guess I, I should start by just setting the stage a little bit. Um, in, uh, in December of 2020, uh, the New York State Department of Health uh, reached out to uh, hospitals in um, 10 hospitals around the state and asked them to be what they called hubs or vaccine distribution hubs. So uh, Albany Medical Center was uh, the hub for, for this area, for the capital region. And I was lucky enough to uh, be tasked with uh, leading that effort with the uh, you know, strength of the Albany Med team behind me. Um, but it was clear from the beginning that this uh, vaccine rollout effort was going to be very much a, a team effort. Um, no one organization or entity, uh, even the state for that matter, had the enough uh, staff or resources or vaccine for that matter to take care of all New Yorkers uh, at, at the same time. So we really needed to depend on one another. And as a result, uh, one of the first groups I reached out to um, to help with the planning is the uh, county health commissioners um, in each of our eight uh, capital region counties. Um, the, uh, the county health departments are clearly the, um, the knowledgeable and expert uh, entities uh, in, in public health response. It's what they do. And uh, having their expertise to anchor the team was absolutely critical to our success in vaccinating uh, 1 million people, not just once, but twice, and now on a third, on a third trip around. So, um, as the vaccine was expanded to different groups, they uh, they were invited to join our vaccination group. Really extraordinary uh, to to be facilitating such a group. 
So how are you able to come up with a fair and equitable plan for distribution of the vaccine? What we were what we were trying to do was plan for the here and now and also just take a moment and try to uh, anticipate what was going to happen next so that we could get ahead of it. The guiding principles that, that we used with this group was to facilitate the fastest way of distributing the vaccine as well as who is in need the most. We had to take into account geographical differences, urban versus rural versus uh, suburban um, priorities, as well as different ethnic groups uh, that uh, that for whatever uh, one reason or another had lower vaccination rates. So when you when you compiled all of that information together, it we were able to negotiate a, a, a pathway that we could all follow uh, and be in compliance with um, with the uh, with the state at the same time. Yeah, thank you for that. And you know, you certainly mentioned a lot of people who are instrumental in that. And you know, I will say. Um, based on this recognition from your peers and nomination for this award and, you know, this overall recognition as a whole health hero, um, no one was as instrumental as you. So really, we want to thank you so much for your efforts uh, going above and beyond and, and really helping us, you know, get through to the other side of this, hopefully. Right. So thanks yes. again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jason and Ruth, for that insight and information. Now back to the winners. Residents aged 18 to 24 in the capital region are twice as likely to be facing difficult employment situations as their older counterparts. In fact, one in seven young adults in the capital region are neither employed nor enrolled in school. This disparity is partly responsible for deep rooted societal ills like poverty, systemic inequality and diseases of despair such as suicide, drug use and alcoholism as opportunities for some young adults can seem out of reach. The SEAT Center in Schenectady is a local nonprofit working hard to reverse these trends by providing transformative educational and workforce experiences that create a sense of purpose and hope for the capital region's young adults. The Social Enterprise and Training or SEAT Center is helping revitalize the area. Its work with young adults has been dramatically successful. 93% of those involved in their programs were either placed in a job or enrolled in college, earning the organization one of this year's Empire Whole Health Heroes Awards. We believe that aptitude is distributed evenly while opportunity is not, says Anne-Marie Lanesey, founder of Albany Can Code. Since 2016, the organization has offered courses in digital literacy, front-end web development, data analytics, programming languages, and more. Since then, the nonprofit program has grown by leaps and bounds. Lanesy is now CEO of the CanCode Communities, an organization committed to increasing access to computer literacy for underserved individuals of all ages in the capital region. And helping to redistribute that opportunity in the tech sector is what CanCode Communities is all about. Lanesy is on a mission to eliminate the systemic barriers that stand in the way of equal access to quality education and create the training and job opportunities required to achieve economic mobility and stability. She says, we engage and connect local employers, community-based organizations, local government and community leaders to increase overall effectiveness in addressing these issues directly. For creating these connections and giving more opportunity to those who don't have it, we honor Can Code communities with an Empire Whole Health Hero Award. A little less than a decade ago, downtown Troy was in trouble, a small city with big city problems after the collapse of this once great waterfront city as an industrial port and textile hub. In fact, Troy wanted to tear down several buildings, including the Clark House, a structure falling apart and in need of rescue. But husband and wife entrepreneurial team, Vic, Christopher, and Heather Levine had a different vision, purchasing and renovating the building, then starting Clark House Hospitality, a collective of original dining and retail experiences in and around the historic building they call home. The move was part of a larger groundswell that saw the revitalization of this once proud city on the banks of the Hudson. 
when Christopher considers everything he and other capital region business owners have had to endure throughout the COVID pandemic, the word he arrives at is resilience. Battling through all the ups and downs of COVID is the thing I'm most proud of in the past year, he says. The business rules were seemingly changing in a constant, erratic, unpredictable manner. After going through that, you kind of get the feeling that you can get through anything. For thriving in the ever-changing hospitality landscape and for helping Troy's rebirth over the past decade, we are proud to honor Clark House Hospitality and Vic Christopher with this year's Whole Health Hero Award. Our next winner is not an individual person, but a whole team. Joseph's House provides emergency shelter or support services to an average of 1,700 adults and children yearly, clearly meeting a need that's only gotten worse. Unfortunately, homelessness in our region has grown over the past several years, not because of an underperforming economy, but because of rising rental and housing costs, says Kevin O'Connor, executive director at Joseph's House. Despite, the, despite this, those at Joseph's House see a possible light at the end of the tunnel. We are hopeful that more affordable housing units will be developed with federal and state support to counter the rising living costs in our region, O'Connor says. Meanwhile, the dedicated staff at Joseph's House will continue their invaluable work of ending homelessness in the capital region. For every person that stays at one of its three locations or emergency shelters, the staff builds relationships based on each guest's and tenant's strengths and capacities, treating each person with dignity and respect while promoting self-determination that empowers guests and tenants to make healthier choices. Congratulations to the entire staff at St. Joseph's House for being named one of this year's Whole Health Heroes. Kip Albany is on a mission to provide high quality, joyful educational environments to historically underserved communities. Their whole child approach sees and develops the potential in each student, knowing that happy individuals make for a successful society. As a member of their team told us, we believe the future of the capital region is bright with opportunity and choice for all youth, celebrating the diverse communities and partnerships to ensure our area thrives. Their dedication to personal and community excellence has earned Kip Albany an Empire Whole Health Heroes Award. For the past two years, the pandemic has brought a variety of new challenges, from physical safety to technology to access to food. Like all societal programs, underrepresented communities have been affected the hardest. In keeping with their culture of inclusion and accessibility, Kip jumped in and got involved. Their staff has partnered with outside organizations to tackle food insecurity, to provide vaccine clinics and COVID-19 testing, and to offer enrichment programs for children, parents, and alumni to best support the community. For helping their students and families, we are proud to name Kip Albany one of this year's winners of the Empire Whole Health Hero Awards. Susan Waters has dedicated her entire 30-year career to supporting people with developmental disabilities. That alone would qualify her to be an Empire Whole Health Hero. But in addition to her impact on the individuals and families she serves through the Center for Disability Services based in Albany, Waters also possesses an enthusiasm, empathy, and team-based philosophy that is infectious to her coworkers. In short, Waters is the team member that makes everyone around her better. I learn something new every day, says Waters. I am one of the lucky people that loves their job and the people I provide healthcare to. Waters is especially proud of the job the center has done over the past two years, ensuring continuous care during a global pandemic. With the pandemic, it certainly has been hard, but in my role as the director of healthcare for the OPWDD programs within the center, it's important to maintain the care of our folks to keep them safe and healthy, Waters says. It has been a challenge in this day and age of telehealth, especially with our population, but we have strived to do the best. The center couldn't have done it without all the hard work of the DSPs, management, nursing, clinic support staff, and so many more. At the end of the day, I think we did an awesome job indeed. For all this and more, we're proud to name Susan Waters a whole health hero. Efforts at Colony Senior Service Centers, the largest provider of senior services and programs in the capital region, 
have been nothing less than a monumental undertaking over the course of the past several years, earning the organization the Empire Whole Health Heroes Award. Notably, Colony stayed open and operational throughout the pandemic, thanks in large part to its staff who volunteered to work seven days a week without a day off for months. Our motto throughout this ordeal has been, we got this, Executive Director Diane Conroy Lasavita says, noting that she and the rest of the colony staff worked around the clock to, develop, to deliver over 37,000 hot meals and 250,000 pounds of groceries to seniors, including those who were vulnerable due to isolation or food insecurity. Witnessing her colleagues graciously work overtime to creatively and effectively soothe the troubled minds and bodies of seniors in their darkest hour has been a huge source of pride for La Civita. We stepped out of our comfort zone, realizing that there were those in our community who were in tremendous need and they were scared, she said. For all this hard work, we're proud to honor the entire staff at the Colony Senior Services Center with this year's Empire Whole Health Heroes Award. Albany is currently bucking a national trend of gun violence. In fact, in direct contrast to the national numbers, shootings in Albany are down 33%. The decrease in shootings has been in part attributed to the capital region's innovative approach to reducing gun violence in the community. The program is known as 518 SNUG, part of the Trinity Alliance's anti-violence initiatives, and it is fully funded by the State Department of Criminal Justice Services. 518 SNUG focuses on youth between the ages of 14 and 24 who are at high risk for involvement with gun violence. The program's success has earned Trinity Alliance and the 518 SNUG program the distinction of the Empire Whole Health Heroes Award. The SNUG program is one anchor of Trinity Alliance's vast family strengthening and neighborhood stabilizing activity, creating an improving climate for residential life, business, and the community says Addie Waldy, Trinity's Director of Development and Marketing. The SNUG program is designed to reduce violence. Trinity is after the next level up, which is achieving peace and harmony as well as a foundational step towards urban renewal. For this vision of future renewal and for helping reduce gun violence in Albany, we're proud to honor Trinity Alliance's 518 SNUG program as one of this year's Empire Whole Health Heroes. For our final interview, we're going to bring Jason back to talk to the team from Snug 518 and Trinity. Jason, take it away. Harris Oberlander, CEO of Trinity Alliance, and Justin Gaddy, Director of 518 Snug. Uh, thank you both for joining us, and congratulations on being named 2022 Empire Blue Cross Whole Health Heroes. Thank you. Thank you. So this year, we expanded things a little bit, and we actually included honorees that are improving the health of communities in a variety of different ways. So can you start by telling us about the work you've been doing at the Trinity Alliance with the SNUG program? You know, some of the things that we do to reach our par participants is that we try to get an idea of what's driving our participants, right? So our outreach workers are out there, they're working with the, the, uh, the kids and the community members, and we're seeing what's driving the youth so we can better redirect them in areas. For example, right, we noticed that a lot of our participants and uh, community and the people in our community, they're getting more into making their own music and music videos. So um, DCJS helped uh, provide us funding with providing a, a studio equipment so we can better help them uh, move forward in a more productive way. We also um, were there when a shooting occurs Whenever a shooting happens, we have a partnership with our with Albany Medical Center and a um, one-way relationship with the APD. They notify us when a shooting happens so we can better get out there and stop any retaliation. They help us provide that information with us so we can be that in-between person so no one goes to an early grave or to prison for the rest of their lives. The, the other important part is that is happening behind the scenes is that the workers are mediating conflict. And those we don't hear about because you, you don't see them and um, we can't really report out on them. We have numbers, but we don't, you know, they're not as visible as the shootings themselves, but there are tens and hundreds of, of mediations that happen each week, each, each month and each year 
that amount to um, you know avoided avoided um, shootings because they've intervened and they've settled issues so that the the warring combats combatants are you know at ease with one another and and have made a commitment not to retaliate against one another. How do we address the root cause of, of that and you know these things that can really kind of you know, jeopardize the, the future of a child and, you know, expose them to violence. How do we address that? So I, I'll say again, uh, you know, the best way to address that is just getting a good understanding of what that participant in that family in that family is going through. You know, we have to understand the trauma that's been that that that's been passed down to them. Like we, we notice in our community, there's been a lot of uh, generational trauma passed down to kids and, we, and our participants are going through a lot, you know, whether it's single parents households, you know, happen to live, happen to be uh, dealt at a young age to where they're over they're watching their younger siblings, you know, we have to, you know, first understand what these participants are going through, what's going on in their heads, what they're believing. In addition to that, they can call upon our community health workers, our early intervention specialists, our child welfare specialists, our uh, food security food pantry, our housing specialist, um, all the staff that stands behind them to address the underlying issues that exist for the family. We don't limit ourselves to just addressing the individuals who are, at, at, who are the victims of a system that in some ways has neglected them um, and left them behind. We also address the whole picture by building community amenities and capacity to support the family so that when they are stronger, when they are standing up on their own two feet, they have the places and the, the supports to seek out that are part of a community um, uh, infrastructure that are, are family friendly and, and youth and child friendly. Yes, I mean, thanks for that. This is really inspired work that you guys do, and it certainly comes through when talking to you. So, you know, from, from my perspective and from everybody here at Empire, I just want to say thank you, right? I mean, it's certainly, uh, you're having a definite positive impact on the health of our community. So thanks again. And, um, you know, congratulations on the recognition. I know you're not in it for the recognition, but uh, you, you certainly deserve it. Thank you for that, Jason. And there you have it, all 25 winners of this year's Whole Health Heroes Awards. A special thank you to our sponsors, Empire Blue Cross and their regional VP, Jason O'Malley, for joining us today. Also, thank you to our keynote speaker, Mark Egan, from the Capital Region Chamber. We also couldn't have created this without a whole host of people behind the scenes. So thank you to Courtney Barker, Adam Weiner, and Jim Tenney, from the Empire Blue Cross team, Angie Herter and Rhonda Bachman and Erica Smith from the Times Union and everyone else who made this possible. I'm Casey Seiler, editor of the Times Union. Thank you all for joining us. And that's a wrap on this year's awards. Have a great day.